Almighty God, we give you thanks for this most holy night and for that unbelievable, unimaginable news that you have come to be with us, that you have not stayed afar off, but you've humbled yourself as a tiny baby born in a manger in Bethlehem in order to be one of us and to redeem us from our sins. Lord, on this Christmas Eve, we have heard this story so many times, but I pray that our hearts would be kindled anew by its truth and its transformative reality for us and that you have not stayed afar off, but you have drawn very near. Lord, we give you our lives this evening. Be blessed by every word of my mouth, every meditation of every heart in this place. For you, Lord, are who we depend upon as our only rock and our only redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It is so good to say that, right? I mean... There's one reason why we do Advent so seriously around here is so that our Merry Christmases are not cheap, right? We earn them over the course of these last four Sundays, and it is such a joy to finally be able to say it, to say it with joy, and with purpose, with meaning, with all that it conveys to us, that indeed we can be happy because of what Jesus has done for us. It is such a joy to be with you on this glorious Christmas Eve. Every year during this service, we get to hear our children tell us once more the most glorious story that has ever been told in created history. And even while we were lost and dead in our sins, God's zealous love for us knew no bounds. He did not abandon you to die. He did not leave me dead in my sins. But rather, he comes to save us, to redeem us from slavery to sin. He gave us his one and his only and his precious son. At Christmas, we celebrate the fact that God has come among us in human flesh. And so on this night, we get to say that creation-altering news of Emmanuel. God is with us. He's not stayed afar off in heaven above, but rather he's emptied himself, and he's come into the middle of my messy life. He's come into the very heart of your messy life. He loved us with a zealous, unstoppable love, and he's come to heal us. He's come to make us whole, the perfect one, the absolutely perfect one, came into a world full of imperfection so that we might know life again. God became man that man might be with God again. Amen? Amen. Well, on Christmas Eve, after our children have told us the truth through that glorious pageant, I, I like to stay down here on the floor and preach a sermon because if I go up there in the chancel or we pull the pulpit back out, then we, it's like we go back into the lofty realm above instead of staying down here on the floor, which is exactly what the Lord does for us. That is the reason that we celebrate Christmas. On our terms, God comes to us. 2,000 years ago, in a grungy stable, in a backwater little village, the King of Glory got down on your level. He got down on mine, and he comes to where we are so that he might lift us back up to where he is, back into the very presence of God. If you've ever been to Bethlehem, you know, it's kind of still to this day kind of a ratty little village. You know, it's, it's in the West Bank. It's deeply impoverished. You leave Israel proper and come into this West Bank settlement, and it's just poverty everywhere. And the plaza around the Church of the Nativity, it's not the most beautiful place that you will be if you ever travel to Israel. But it is there that those who walked in great darkness suddenly see the great light, that the true light of God has come into the world to redeem us. You know, we wait for Christmas all year, don't we? And sometimes we can experience it, and it can be that emotional letdown when it's over. So I want to beg you tonight to hear this truth and to hold on to it 
in the days that are to come. Tonight is the celebration of a long-awaited healing. When sin came into the world, it sent a concussive shockwave to the whole of the created order. Our disobedience caused a disruption of everything that was good and right. And you and I, sinful, fallen humanity, we turned our back on God, and suddenly goodness and peace were replaced with darkness and discord, and creation groaned for thousands and thousands of years. But tonight comes the quiet joy of Christmas. We get to hear centuries of prophecy finally come true. A son has been given. He's God in the flesh. He's come to heal you. He's come to heal me. He's come to restore us to God, to bring us the only joy, joy and hope and peace that we could possibly have. So tonight, we shout, Emmanuel, God is among us. I'm so proud of you, congregation, for catching your line in the script, right? Tonight, we get to say glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among men and women because he's shown us his favor and his love. I want you to realize that tonight changes everything about your life. Tonight, you get to hear God say, I have not abandoned you, and I will not abandon you, no matter how sick you are with sin. I've come to restore you. You've waited for me in the darkness, and now has the light shone on your life. God has humbled himself that he might break into your life and into mine. He comes to us as this helpless babe, lying in a manger, and he says, I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to give up my life so that you might have life, and not life in some sort of shallow way, but that you might have life in all of its abundance. So this evening, in the quiet of Christmas, can you see this little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes for what he is? He is direct evidence that God loves you and that he knows you and that he would go to any length to redeem you from your sins. This little baby is the answer to all the pain that you have felt in the year that has passed. He is the one who says that there is no mess in your life that is too far gone for his inbreaking grace. If you're here tonight and you're far from Jesus, I implore you to look. He's drawing near to you even now. Jesus is the only answer to your greatest need. He is the great healer of your terminal illness of sin. Jesus is the one who will make you worthy to join in that heavenly chorus that cries out glory to God in the highest. And that is what we celebrate at Christmas. Not the stuff we buy, not the tinsel on the tree, not the holly and the wreaths. What we celebrate is that God has drawn near to you. He has drawn near to me. And I pray that all of us will see him and see that in him is life indeed. I love every one of you so much. It's always such a joy to be with you on Christmas Eve. I thank my God that he makes us a holy family on this night, the gift of Jesus, that little baby lying in a manger. It's, it's him that makes us worthy to be called sons and daughters of God most high. It's Jesus that allows us to call each other brothers and sisters in Jesus, because that's what we are. My friends, I'm honored to wish you a merry Merry Christmas. Amen? Amen.